Tensions are once again high outside the legislature in St. John's. Fish harvesters in the province are protesting for a second day, and they continue to demand the government allow them to sell their catch out of province. The protests that we showed you as they were going on live uh, yesterday stopped the government from tabling its budget that looks to go ahead today. Terry Roberts brought us that uh, extraordinary live reporting yesterday. He's back in that same position outside the Confederation building. Terry, just uh, why don't we start together? We're going to be uh, following this all through our program, obviously, but what is the scene today and what has been happening? Yeah, Heather, good morning. Well, uh, look, it's much the, in, in a lot of ways, it's the same as yesterday. We have hundreds of seafood harvesters and their supporters. They arrived here in, the, in darkness this morning before 6 a.m. and they, uh, they spread out all around Confederation Building, blocking entrances to the seat of government here in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. But what's different about this morning? Well, two things. First is the police posture. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's a much more militant uh, police force here this morning. There are dozens of uh, police, Royal Newfoundland Constabulary officers dressed in full riot gear. You know, the, the shields, uh, uh, the heavily uh, protective uh, helmets, those kind of things. They weren't here yesterday. And secondly, there's a court injunction right now. So I was uh, here this morning when uh, two senior police officers handed, uh, personally handed that uh, court injunction to the protest leaders, uh, John Effort Jr. and uh, union leader uh, Jason Spingle. So that's what's different about today. There's a court injunction here and basically spelling out the do's and don'ts for these protesters here today. Basically, uh, they cannot hinder in any way uh, free and open access to Confederation building here today. There was, uh, you know, the, the Premier said yesterday, you know, that he doesn't want to see hundreds of arrests. And uh, it looks to me that the RNC are prepared to make some arrests here today if there is any uh, uh, any anyone impedes access uh, to this building and the true test of that injunction is coming in about uh, 30 minutes less than 30 minutes now that's when the first public servants start showing up here today and they try to gain access to this building you're seeing here behind me so big questions here will these harvesters will these angry seafood harvesters allow access to confederation building well their protest leader john effort he was on the steps earlier this morning and speaking to those protesters and he was pleading, much like he did yesterday, for peaceful demonstration. He was pleading for people to respect the injunction. And uh, he doesn't want any arrests here today. He doesn't want any more violence. He doesn't want, he says he doesn't want these harvesters to give anyone any reason to say that they're an angry mob. So uh, that true test though is coming up. Uh, in, in about uh, 30 minutes. In 30 so. minutes, as you say. And Terry, we'll be back to you. I, I just want to acknowledge what seems to be happening there. I'm watching you, Terry, and I'm watching you watch the people around you and your surroundings. From what I understand, it's pretty tense this morning, not necessarily happy with the reporting of this story and reporters' presence. Can you just give us a little bit of a sense of, of the climate? Because it seems to have changed from when we were talking yesterday. Yes, it has. It was a little bit of it yesterday. But here's the situation. There are no politicians here for these angry protesters to vent their frustrations at. There are no, there are no uh, crab plant owners, the, uh, you know, the big powerful uh, processors. They're not here for these people to vent their frustrations at. Uh, but the media is here. So uh, you know, we've certainly become a target. Uh, you know, we hear constant uh, sniping, uh, you know, not telling the truth, not telling the facts of the story, uh, you know, funded by the liberals, that kind of, especially the CBC. I'm here with the CBC jacket. Uh, lots of CBC uh, attire, so that's an invitation. And I actually had, uh, you know, one person make contact with me here this morning with my shoulder. So it's a, it's a tense situation that's, uh, you know, um, uh, a little bit uncomfortable, but we're here to try and tell uh, an important story because this is an important story, Heather. This, is, this is industry is the backbone of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's why we are here in this province, so we have to tell this story. And these, these harvesters are upset, they, they believe that they're not being treated fairly. They want free enterprise. They want to be able to sell their catch uh, who, who they want to sell it to. They want to have more flexibility in their enterprises because they're being squeezed because the market is pretty tough right now for the price they're getting for that product. So, uh, you know, these are desperate times for a lot of people and sometimes that can lead to uh, a behavior that you know, normally uh, wouldn't see. So we're crossing our fingers here now that this injunction is respected here today and that we don't see the same unrest that we saw yesterday, that we don't see injuries 
like we saw yesterday. One of these harvesters, uh, we're told, broke a hip yesterday. This is a man who makes his living on the sea, and now he has a serious injury. Uh, we saw yesterday an, our, a Royal Newfoundland Constabulary officer being taken away from here in uh, a stretcher. So uh, um, the leaders of this protest, they don't want to see that today. But again, time we will, will tell see. now what happens. We're looking happens. at those pictures as you referenced them, Terry. And again, as you mentioned, a change in tone. Um, and uh, I'm concerned for your well-being, as you mentioned that physical contact. So please, obviously, keep that first and foremost for you. Just before I let you go, and obviously we'll stay in close touch, you say the test coming up in about 30 minutes. Does it look today like the budget is going to be able to go ahead? Well, again, that's, that's, the, that's the big question. Uh, we're going to, uh, the media, we're, we're going to receive an email shortly, I'm told, about, uh, you know, we're supposed to go in for a budget lockup at around uh, 9 o'clock when we receive an early uh, copy of the budget. So we'll know that uh, pretty soon. What, what, uh, you know, will we get that correspondence from government? Uh, but I have been he hearing talk that a lot of uh, government workers were told last night uh, to work from home today. You know, if you're not part of the budget process, stay home and do your work from home. Not to, uh, you know, because thousands of people work in this complex. So that's probably a good move. So, uh, but the premier said yesterday he wants to deliver this budget today. There's 530,000 people in this province. Uh, it's a $10 billion budget. It affects a lot of people, not just the fishery. He wants to go ahead with, uh, with this process today. It was delayed yesterday. Historically, I don't know if we've ever had a, a situation like we had yesterday. So, but again, uh, time will tell. There is some anger in this uh, crowd. They are respecting the injunction. They're keeping a distance from the police officers. But I have heard some words, uh, you know, taunting, that kind of thing. So um, there is tension here. And where that goes in the next 30 to 40 minutes remains to be seen, Heather.